You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of boxing. Listen, man, we new boxing promoters. This is our new fighter right here, man. We got him. We got uh, uh boots. We got all the all the fighters under our promotional company. We doing it, man. PBC, listen, we coming for you. I'm just letting it be known right now. Uh, they, we listen, got man. We got sweet mother- hands on it. Caleb planting the mother. You know, it was crazy. They used to call me heavy hands when I used to box. Yeah, right. So for you to get that name in this day, you know what I mean? Back in the day, I'm talking about like that. I'm feather talking about like in the 80s. Feather hands. Oh, that's a good name, feather hands. That means, you know what I mean? You get the off real quick. You got a new type of hands, but no. You, all, you don't hurt nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so. You know, you know, who would be considered feathered hands in this generation? No, feather oh, no, hands no, mean looking who, at him. Yo, no, you know who 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 would have been considered feather hands though? Paulie Malignaggi. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Paulie skills. Paulie Feather Hands Malignaggi. <laughs> Why? Why? Who knows? Paulie, Paulie would have knocked skills. me out. He would he would have gave me a hellation. Yeah, that, definitely be true. Huh? He Where is gave, he at? Paulie sure. probably would have gave me a hellation. Is he retired? Yeah, he do commentary right now. Yeah, he's a good I fighter, stepped, but he wasn't going to knock fighters. nobody out. Like, I stepped to retire, watched up fighters. I he, stepped even up. when you start your career off and he was fighting cab drivers, he wasn't knocking them down. <laughs> he oh, he was just ball. putting the leashes out. Let me know when we somewhere and I see him, I'm going to step to him. Like, what's up? What are we doing? You know no, I, mean? I wouldn't do that. Feather hands are putting it. No, feather hands ain't doing nothing. Yes, he would. I'm telling you, man. You, you, you know what's crazy? Sweet hands, they say. You got a fit, you know, if I jump in the ring with you, it's a 59% chance that you might put me to sleep. But if I could run the other percentage. Probably about 159. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, so I'm like, damn, that ain't bad. 59 right, well, But what about you and him in a, in a MMA game? Oh, no, he's done. I'm going to tap him oh, out. He, put him in a guillotine. No, no, no. I got 13 I'm, black I'm belts. I'm a five-time world champion in kickboxing. Who was your Nine teacher? Time national ch- who was your teacher? Huh? My daddy. Oh, yeah, I know him, so I I can't fight any fighters if I know they coach and they trainers. That's a martial <laughs> arts rule. You, you lucked out. That's a rule of martial arts. Yep. I can't do that, Gil. That's, you know what I mean? That's like a, <laughs> that's like a code that we shit. No, like anybody that know Karate Earl, Bruce so Lee, MMA, any connection. He, he would go to the, sleep. Uh, MMA, I mean, he'll go to the, sleep. The Gracie, the Gracie. How you'll get him out of there, though? Because he said he'll guillotine you. He can't even spell guillotine. <laughs> He wasn't. He never was a good read or spell. I've been around with the. I've been. Spell it. I've right. been in spell the dojo. Right hold on. I've right been quick. in the dojo with the Gracies. Like, how would you even challenge my my history of the game? I've been around with the Gracies and spell dojo. No, <laughs> Tanya <I'm>, Gracie. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no. You're talking about you, Roy and you talking about Tanya and Keisha now, Gracie. <laughs> I'm starting to see things, and I've been doing my own personal research, and I'm starting to realize with boxing. Everybody's scared to take an L. It's like nobody want to go in there and just fight the fight. Everybody ducking. Everybody acting like it's about money. Mm. Oh, I want to fight. It's like that's like I said. That's the new duck. Yeah. Act like it's about the purse. Oh, they not giving me enough. Or why I'm not like. What is your real feel about boxing and the sport? Like, what is going on? Well, I mean, I feel like there's been a lot of that, but it does seem, uh, you know, here recently there's been a bit of a shift in boxing, and um, you know, I pride myself on not being one of those guys who's ever ducked any smoke or ducked any big fighter. That's why, you know, you see me, I fought people like Canelo, then Anthony Durrell back to back, and then David Benavidez right after that. And, um, you know, I got four or five former or current world champions on my resume. So um, I'm all in the business. You know, the legacy fights are the money fights. So I'm trying to get it in while I can because, you know, obviously boxing is a short window and, um, like I said, my dad's always preached like, hey, the money fights are the legacy fights. So, you know, you can get both at the same time chasing the right fights. Is there anybody you looking for out here? Um, I'm looking to fight Charlo next. That, that's the fight that I want. And, um, you know, I know he's been out for a minute. If he wants to get a tune up, that's perfectly fine with me. But um, by next what year, Charlo, we should be fighting. Uh, Jamel or Jamal? Jamal, Jamal. Uh, oh, Jamel, okay. you know, Jamel, he's moving up from yeah. 154 to 168 to fight yeah. Canelo. Yeah. Um, Jamal, he fights at 160, and he's about to move up to 168. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we need to make it happen. Obviously, you know, we had a disagreement recently that um, had to get figured out. But uh, that that would be a big fight for the fans. I know a lot of people want to see it, and that's what I want. That's what I want next. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like, I know you, right? And I know, you know, you see things on the Internet, and you can never go off the Internet because – that's only a small portion mm-hmm. of something that happened. I know your temperament, so you more of a laid back, smooth. I'm just, you know, don't f- with me. But if you do f- yeah. with me, like, so I I know that something had to happen for you to react like that. Yeah. Because I know you, so 
And when I was watching, I was like, oh, something happened. Must have been crazy for him to react like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, we was uh, at the Bud uh, Spence wins behind the stage. You know, me and uh, my wife, JP, just catching up with everybody and, you know, just saying what's up to Steven Espinoza and all those people. I see Jamal. He's like sent off to the side, just staring at me, but it's like a blank stare. I'm like, you know, what does this dude want? He walks up. He's like, man, why don't you? With me, why don't you with me? I'm like, what? What do, you, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, man, why don't you with me? I with you. I look up to you, man. I look up to you. And I'm like, I just felt like it was weird to say. I didn't feel like Jamal would tell, say something like that. Like, oh man, I look up to you. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's all. You know, we're cool. It's just, you know, sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're cold. Like, you'll literally come up to me one time and tell me you love me, and then the next time I see you on an interview, you'll be, you'll be saying like, you know, I'll beat the out of Caleb and send him back to Tennessee and this and that so I really don't know how to take you so I just keep my distance he's like no man I fuck with you I fuck with you and Jordy I'm like Jordy her name is Jordan my wife's name is Jordan not Jordy he's like see now you're being cold I'm like no bro don't call my wife something like that she don't need a pet name yeah you remix man, man. yeah cause yeah, yeah. that shit happened to him yeah. uh, uh, you know, that's that shit. Yeah. Desi, Desi, Desi. Call my wife stink. I'm a stink, stink. Stink, yeah. yeah I'm gonna look still, for you. Desi, I'm going to fuck around. You, you, you pulled the yeah, Desi man right there. Now, see, I understand. You Desi out here starting trends. Niggas taking shots. You <laughs> supposed you to do what you need to do. Well, I'm going to And I'm like, no, nah, bro. And he starts looking up. He's thinking, he's like, you know what? You're right, bro. I wouldn't want somebody calling my wife something like that. And he's like, do you want to fight? I'm like, yeah, I want to fight. Of course I want to fight. He's like, because I don't even want to fight. I'm like, look, I know you got shit going on. You know, I know you get that cleaned up and, you know, we can make something happen. And uh, he's like, give me a hot sentence, cold sentence, hot sentence, cold sentence. It's kind of hard to follow me. And then he asked me again, do you want to fight? Because I'll fight. And I'm like, yeah, of course I want to fight. He's like, it won't even be a good fight. I'm like, why not? He said, because I'll beat the shit out of you. I'm like, you see, bro, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I can't, I don't know how to take you. Yeah. And he starts getting frustrated. He reached up and pulls the hair on my chin. Wait, what? Yeah. He I'm touched like, your face, huh? Yeah, pulled the chin, uh, hair on my chin. Uh, kind of hard, too. And I kind of like pushed him off me. And people are, you know, starting to hear us and kind of starting to get in between us. I'm like, bro, don't ever do that again. Like, what is your problem? Why would you Why would you do that? Yeah. And he starts calling me a white boy. Like, look at him, y'all. Acting just like a white boy. Look at him. Getting scared just like a white boy would. Getting shook just like a white boy would. And he done it again. And then he pulled the hair on my chin again, but even a little harder. <laughs> he like, what the, so I'm like, what the f are you doing? And I got my wife standing behind me. Yeah, I'm your wife. Of, oh, he ready to die. He ready to die. Your wife was there. Oh, shit. And, you know, standing in the room full of all my boxing peers. And it's like, you know, you really put my back against the wall when you do something like that. So, you know, I had to handle my business and do what I did. And y'all seen the video. But um, honestly, that was the second time I smacked him. The the time I smacked them, it was right before the person started recording. I guess they see me smack them once, and they, they pulled out their phone and started recording, and that's just when I caught them the second time. But I don't know what the oh. his problem was or, you know, why he was doing that. And I just told you, you know, you know to quit on me, and I guess he didn't think I was being serious. So, Damn. You know, unfortunate, but, you know, Wait. you can't just keep – you can't just keep grabbing another man's face. Damn, I'm so he's <laughs> he grab a chin twice and slap you twice. Yeah, it's That's like I got enough damn. decency to not smack you after the first time, and oh, you do it again. Shit. It's either one, you just aren't thinking straight, or two, you don't think I'm going to do anything. You know, you think there's like no repercussions, and to me, that's what a bully is somebody who picks on somebody that they think ain't going to do anything back. But you know, I, I can't do that, I can't. I know Jamel was there, Jamal was there, Errol was there. You know, there's a lot of Texas dudes around when I done it, but I'd rather get beat up by, you know, every Texas guy in the building than have to go home and, you know, try to sleep at night or look at my wife and be like, hey, you know, I'll protect us. I'll, I'll stand up for us, you know, and she, she'll probably believe it, but am I going to believe it? You know, that's what's important. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have somebody out there chastising you like that. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, hey, well, deep. listen, man, I hope y'all can really get in the ring and make some money off of mm -hmm. it. That's you know I mean. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, y'all get paid to fight in the ring. The ring. So yeah. I hope that, you know, you said that's the fight you want. I hope that's the fight that Jamal won. Oh, yeah. I'm. You check my resume. People know that I'm not 
ducking any big fights. Oh no, or, one or thing or about whatever, you, so. that ain't never been on you. Yeah, no, that's so. never been on your jacket. Yeah, we can make that happen next, <laughs> but I don't think he wants to do that. So. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by ShipStation. It's the calm before the holiday storm, but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush now by using ShipStation. Wherever you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, ShipStation can help you increase your profitability, save time automating your shipping and returns in the ShipStation dashboard, and keep costs down with industry-leading carrier discounts while your holiday orders rolling while all them hoarders rolling you're like damn i ain't even got to spend that much money on shipping i ain't got to worry about it. i'm using ship station one thing i like about using ship station you got the free trial you got the quick setup better rates i mean easily automate shipping tasks and manage orders and one simple dashboard i'm talking about one spot you can quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors Effortless. I'm talking about this is effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, SD, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage orders, print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. Set your business up for holiday season success with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code GAME today and sign up for a free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code GAME. You got two losses, which in this day and time, that's really like... That's nothing compared to some of the greatest fighters. They had mo- they had way more losses than that. Yeah. And you still run around here. You got your respect. Uh, you still got a strong name out here. You know what I mean? It's like, what is it in boxing now where everybody want to try to emulate this whole undefeated thing that Floyd did? I think just not seeing things clearly. You know, all, all the greats, you know, took losses. Yeah. All the greats, you know, Roberto Duran is knocked out by Tommy Hearns, you know. Uh, Muhammad Ali, yeah. Roy Jones, you know, if you go down the list... All those guys have losses. Pacquiao. Yeah. And so while at the end of the day, you know, it'd be nice to be undefeated and never lose and never take a hard shot, never get dropped. You know, if you continue to step up and fight the best, you know, at some point you may come up short. You know, that's what happens when the best fight the best. But, you know, you just got to get better and go back to the gym, go back to the drawing board, get with your team and, you know, clean things up. But, you know, it'd be hard for me to say on why why the rest of the world or the why the rest of the boxers, you know, some of them don't see it that way. You know, that's a question for them. But like my dad always says, you know, legacy fights are the money fights. So that's what we want. Mm. That's what it's about. So how old was you when you got into boxing? I started like training competitively when I was nine. And when I first started, I just started, I was kickboxing. And it's just like- oh, um, So you won bull when you told Wallo you- No, no, no. You're kicking no, no, no. To no, break his I back. was about like yeah, yeah, we about the same time. I was about like seven, eight when me and Earl got together. I started training in the park mm. with Earl Karate Earl. But go ahead. So like I was saying, um, he no, think I, I'm bored. He don't know I got thirteen <laughs> black belts. I, I know you had I, about thirteen black eyes in your that's life. That's part of the game. That's a part of the like you got one right now. That's a part of the game. I ain't been in no rumble. He wake up with his shit tenant. He been tenant so much. I, I, don't, I don't. I've been retired out the game for a while now. Yeah. But 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 when you but say, yes, go ahead. I started uh, just kickboxing off at first, and it's like it's called full contact rules. It's really just like mm-hmm. amateur boxing, but you had to throw uh, like six kicks above the waist per round, no clinching, no knees, no elbows, no nothing like that. Mm-hmm. It's really just like amateur boxing, and I uh, have five world titles in that, and nine national titles, and fought in Trinidad, in Tobago, mm-hmm. fought, went to Italy with Team USA, mm-hmm. um, some other places too, and then. I got a little bit older. I really just wanted to box, but I would be boxing and kickboxing simultaneously. So like one weekend, my dad dropped me, you know, to Virginia Beach. The next, you know, weekend or two later, we go to Alabama to box. A couple of weekends later, we would go somewhere else to kickbox, and I was just doing both at the same time. And then once I got to 17, I was like, man, I really don't want to kickbox no more. I just, there's no money in it. That's all I want to do. I don't want to have, a, you know, another job or do anything like that. So I really just want to box. And then I went to the USA Nationals at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado, and ranked third in the nation, top four, make Team USA. And ever since then, I really, then the next year I came back, I won the Gold Glove Nationals, made the Olympic trials, became Olympic alternate, went to London in 2012. And uh, then I turned pro in 2014 and it's been going. When, 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 for the, for the two losses that you got in boxing, what is that? Was it ever a moment in the fights where you say, damn, this ain't going right? Um, I mean, the thing at, at, at like the highest level is sometimes there's a lot of close rounds. So that's one thing that separates people from the top is 
you know, when you know you got the round in the bag, it's easy to stay relaxed and go back to the corner and feel good. But when you when when the round is almost like dead even, and you go back, you're like, man, I think I won, but I know it was close. And you keep having to do that round after round. You know, sometimes it's hard to mentally stay locked in and focused. And so I just I knew that a lot of those rounds were close, but or some may have got away from me. But I mean, both of those that I lost, one was like seven to five. And then with Canelo, you know, I got stopped in 11th, but it's like six to four up until that point. So all of them were were pretty close. It wasn't just, you know, some whitewash or something like that where I'm getting whooped. I don't feel it. I don't I don't. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Now, how's your training regimen? Like, you train. How how often do you train? I train year round, year round, six days a week. Um, spar year round, run year round. I keep my weight in check year round, and um, you know that's the way to do it. If you want to, you know, be at the highest level, this is something that you can't just do part time or most of the year. You know, this is something you really got to dedicate your life to. And um, that's something, I, you know, I'm proud to say that I do. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. I don't party. You know, all I do really is just boxing, training, go home, be daddy with my little girl and my wife. And that's it. How was it for you coming up in Tennessee, man? Um, You know, where I'm from, there are no boxing gyms. It's way out in the middle of the wood, you know. It's a real country. and Trailer uh, park. Yeah. Ours didn't come with the park. It was just a trailer. Though. Just a trailer. Yeah, yeah, you just no park, park. pulled no it park. up, parked it up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, um. So we had to travel to downtown Nashville to uh, get sparring and training. And, you know, my daddy and my grandpa put a little uh, money together to open up a gym close to where we was at. And it didn't even have, like, any mats on the floor. It was just, like, a white tile. It was, like, a little, maybe, like, two of these rooms. And it was, like, white tile floor. And we just put tape on the ground uh, in the shape of a square. And that's what, when we sparred, we would just stand around and hold hands. And there was, like, one heavy bag in the um in the corner you couldn't even work all the way around it but you know when you really want something you don't really need like all the special stuff all the latest training gear but um it was cool not really a lot of people i don't think believed in it because there were no boxers where i'm from so i don't really think that they seen the vision but uh they see it now for sure so like like your father i see you see your father a lot mm-hmm. your father was really important in you yeah and, and he believed in it for you yeah, he did. Me and my daddy were, you know, anyone who knows us knows we're like really close. Mm-hmm. I've been, I've been in his back pocket for the most part since I was, since I came in. So, um, he believed in it from the get go. He believed in it, and that gave me a lot of confidence because my dad, he was a fighter when he was younger, and um, for him to have that belief in me and, and put as much as he did, driving all the way to Chicago, driving all the way to Colorado Springs, driving all the way to Florida, just driving me everywhere in, in the car, you know, to make these tournaments and stuff, you know. It really gave me the confidence to like, man, I if he believes in me, you know, I know this thing's gonna work out. And so he he's given me a lot of good guidance over the years. If in the ring, out of the ring, you know, I I'm blessed to have a daddy like him for sure. Gil had aspirations to be like your father and travel all around with his son, but <laughs> little cuz kept getting knocked out. Oh yeah? Yeah, he kept getting knocked out. He was one of them coaches that never that he was his coach, he was his trainer. Slash five, and it just didn't work. I think yeah. he had the wrong train. I was in jail. I was hearing about it, man. Yeah. I was like, damn. Because, you know, he told me, yeah, because you're going to go to Nationals. I said, what's Nationals? You can't he even make it to like the locals. Off. Tell me the Nationals. Man, ain't even making it to the locals. Because <laughs> we talk, no, I'm just saying, like, that's how it was. He just kept getting knocked out. He Because that's why I'm like, damn, is that Gil wanted to be that dad. <laughs> he tried. Oh, my hey, God. Yo, my son going to knock you out lying like that, putting smut on his stage. <laughs> He kept getting that worked a, out That was gym. a good one. Though. He was gym wreck. Let me ask you a question. Fighting Canelo, right? Yeah. What did he do? Like, what did Canelo do good that you was like, okay, he might be a little better than what I thought? And I, what did he, what did, what was he, he you might have thought he was good at something, and he was like, ah, he not it's not what I think. You know what I'm saying? The flip sides of both things. Like, what did he do? Was it like his defense? Was it, you know what I mean? What did he do? He was like, oh, okay, this is elite. Yeah, I mean, I think just overall, just his experience level, you know, and obviously going into the fight, I knew how experienced he was, but the amount of, you know, how big a part that played. Yeah. You know, that's something that you can't really make up for. You got to go through the fire to get that experience. Right. And that's something he's obviously done. And um, so I think just his 
his overall experience played a major key in that. Mm-hmm. You know, it was for undisputed for all four belts, and you know he had a big crowd there. It was like eighteen, nineteen thousand people, and I had like you know maybe a thousand people in mm-hmm. there rooting for me. So um, I think just the crowd, mm. being able to manage the crowd, and just the overall experience, but. It's something I, that now I've gone through the fire. Absolutely. Get, you feel me? And I've so been now you'll to, be better. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, you know, coming back after that fight, you know, I fought former two-time world champ, Anthony Durrell. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like that experience definitely helped play a part in, you know, how that fight went down mm-hmm. and getting a knockout, 2022 knockout of the year and, you know, a decent celebration after two. So I think it played a big key. I feel like the David Benavidez mm-hmm. fight, I feel like he was up early. And then uh, he came on. Yep. Towards the end. Yep. I think uh, like at the end of the sixth round, and he knows it too. But um, he hit me with a left hook to the body, like right before the uh, right before the bell, like right on the liver. And he heard me breathing kind of hard. The bell rang. He's like, "Man, I heard you. I heard you." Mm-hmm. And um, he started to pick it up from there. And then in the eighth round, I caught a headbutt mm-hmm. from him and um, started to make it kind of hard to see. So I started to clinch a little more. And um, you know, some guys when they clinch, that's a good place to rest. And then some guys they pick up the activity when you clinch them. And he started to pick up the activity level when I would clinch him. It made things a little harder, but um, still a close fight. You know, David, yeah. he's obviously a great fighter, and that's why I wanted to fight him to begin with. <laughs> but um, I'd love to run it back. Absolutely, I would love to see y'all run it back too. I would love to see a rematch with you and Canelo. Oh yeah, that's the plan. That's what that's what I'm that's what I'm shooting for. Um, you know. Try to get a go another good win under my belt with Jamal Charlo, and you know see where the cards fall. You for really that. want that want. Charlo fight? Yeah, I definitely want that fight. I definitely want that fight. Mm. But y'all uh, like you you know y'all like because you, you like I sense a little animosity, but like you know y'all like like y'all even like he pulled your hair it's like twice you you. I mean, slapped him twice, y'all. Like, no, the slap, the slap is like that's yeah, different. Like, that's you, not like, even. you actually up. Like, the slaps is like you up. Like, <laughs> no, we got, we we got a, we got a rumble. We got to make that happen. And so Jamal, I like, I like, I like, I, like, I love when when fighters come no, on here Jamal, though, and, wanna, and keep Jamal it boxing. Jamal got to want to rumble you after you slapped him twice. Say he what? got, he got to want to rumble you after you slapped him. I mean, one would think. Damn. That's what I want, but you so know. So what's the problem? What's the paperwork? Who we got to call? I mean, you don't got to call me. Al, <sighs> man, call, email me, Al. We gonna talk about this. Yeah, we definitely want to make. Yeah, talk. Yeah, that yeah. get uh, get Jamal on the phone. Get it done, man. Yep. We we could see this in uh, December, right? Oh yeah, I'll be ready. I've been training, mm. so and like I said, you know, I, I that's all I do is train. So there is no drinking, no partying no none of that this is this is what i do full time so if you want to make it happen just you have to be ready so uh, how, what do you how do you who do you like in uh canelo and uh other charlo brother fight coming up um not you know, who do I you think, like but who do you see winning you and know i why? think it's hard to like bet against canelo's experience level especially mm-hmm. at the, that level but you know jamel he's a he's a great fighter and he's undisputed himself at 154 mm-hmm. and um He's the younger guy. He's lighter, so he may be able to move better. And um, we'll just have to see. You know, it's definitely a style, two different styles, and um, it's a good stylistic matchup. And if he's able to take Canelo's power and be able to stay in at all 12 rounds, you know, he, he's he's definitely got his chances of getting his hand raised. And um, actually, speaking of Jamel, I, I heard recently that, you know, he wasn't super fond of what it had to do with his, uh, you know, the run, the scuffle I got into with his brother, I think maybe he's been catching some heat. People thinking it's him and getting them too yeah, confused. Probably. And um, so, but I honestly, I've never had a problem with the Jamel. You know, he's always been super respectful. You know, every time we've linked up, every time we've seen, you know, Mrs. Plant, you know, respectful to my wife. And so I, I never had an issue and don't have an issue with Jamel. And, you know, you know, I hope he does well on, on the thirtieth. You know, whatever whatever happens, happens on the thirtieth. But uh, you know, Jamel, he's always been cool by me. So yeah, and he's a and Jamel was on a, a show. You know what I mean? And the one thing that I like that he really expressed about himself was growth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He he see who he was, and then he understand who he is now, and he expressed that he's not, you know, really trying to go back to who he was. Yeah. So. 
you and he expressed that he had seen a video from the past of when he was snapping on Tank and Adrian Broner, and then he like, now me we cool. Yeah, yeah. But the video still surfaced, and my kids got to see the video, and yeah. so you know, it's all about growth, man. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he had an understanding, like, you know, damn, even shit from way long ago can you it know, could come catch up back and up to you. Yeah. So you know, you got to be mindful of how you move, and yeah, I, I seen that part, and it does seem like you know. You de there's definitely some growth there, so you know, hats off to him for that. So that's what's up, man. Proud of you, man, and keep growing and keep glowing, yeah. man. Now, when, when, when we talking about boxing, right? Who is your top five all time? Dead or alive? Yeah, dead or alive, gotta be. Um, in no order, but Floyd, uh, Roy Jones, mm. um, James Tony. Damn, nobody never see James. Um, Terry Norris, damn, and Caleb Plant. No, um, you can't count you. I just did, man. Come on, damn. Oh, and you right out. You gonna tell him what he can't I'm do just on our show? All right, cool. Look, you see that? Jesus, no, what we're gonna do? Listen, he gonna tell him <laughs> what he can do on our show, and then he told him, yeah, "I do it." I want on your show. He said, "Ooh." ooh. He said, "Okay." okay. I, mean, okay. I ain't trying to get. Him, man. I'm retired, man. I don't. He called me a couple years ago. He'd been, he'd been scuffling this joint, but it's cool. About that, he's a. That's right. It's not gonna work, man. It always worked. It's been working since you. I'm not even gonna throw my belts yeah, around. Yeah. Been, first of all, listen. That's it's why he left best. the karate shit alone and said, "You know what? I'm going straight boxing." Well, you know, I'm just. Well, and it wasn't no money in that. Yeah, but that's a, it's, it's, he said, man. Ain't no money in it. I mean, when you ever see kickboxing on TV, oh, get your pay-per-view kickboxing event. You never seen that. <laughs> like what you talking about? That's part of why on TV since like the '80s. So that's part of why I retired, though. Yeah. You know, after I got my 13 belts, I was like, <laughs> put them up and just chill. Yeah, now, I mean, that was the time he stole 13 belts out of American Eagle. Yeah, but go ahead. What yeah. fights you want to see though? In boxing, like not, yeah, not, like not with me in them, but other fighters. Yeah, what fights you really want to see that probably won't happen? Mm, I don't want to say that they probably won't happen, Shit. but you know the whole 35 division, you know, like or Tank Shakur, Devin, oh, that's you know all those guys. Division. You know, I got I'm cool with all those guys. I know they don't necessarily get along, but I'm cool with all those guys. So I would love to see all of them rumble. Um, who else? You said don't mention me, but me and Canelo need to run it back. Mm. Me and David, we need to run it back. Mm. Um. Yeah, those are like mm. on, the, on the top of the list. That's major. Yeah. One hundred thirty-five. I, I want to see boots against any of the champions. <laughs> oh yeah, and I'd love to see boots. That's what I want to see. I'd love to see Scooter. Uh, you now, know, running back with Anyway. I want. I love yes. to see Scooter running back with Anyway at one twenty-six. Yep. I absolutely would love to see that. Yeah, that's my guy, Boots. He's amazing. He, you know, he's a great fighter. So yes, he is. He just needs his chance. You know, he got his. He kind of had a coming out party against uh, Villa, mm -hmm. who was, you know, super. Was a, guy oh my god, that was a something. crazy fight, man. He, I know he, Roman he Villa him. don't speak English, but if anybody's watching this that speak his language you know that him? speaks English, please tell him that Gilly from Million Dollars Worth of Game is a fan of you. He's a beast. You are a gangster. You took a hellacious. Whooping and would not stop coming. That is the epitome of a gladiator. Yep. That somebody is on a on a different level tonight. They they getting over on you tonight, but you never you never quit trying out. to win. Right. You oh, never. That's all you can ask. Trying you know? to win. You never gave me my props. I took some 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 ass whooping. Man, man, you quit, man. You, you just yeah, said it. You quit. Sock to you rolled up under the car. You gave up. And then as soon as Lou left, you rolled from under the car, and they're going to ask me why I don't help. That's a smart thing to do. You're not supposed to get hit when you're fighting, bro. Yeah, but you shit your pants, too. You wasn't supposed to do that. No, nah, I didn't but, do that one. I just, But he never gave you my props for my record and my... You wasn't no gladiator. <laughs> so you get props for... Fuck you, though. <laughs> I just look at the fight game different. You was more like a radiator. <laughs> Sock, you eat you high up. <laughs> you got to put, put ice on your cooling. A radiator. He was more like a radiator, <laughs> Shock, <laughs> heat his eye right up. <sighs> it gets swolled up, boy. His shit swell up nice too fast. Is that I'm what happened? You. Yes. I mean, no, not really. What happened? It happened a couple times. I got a little socked and, you know, I didn't know where I was at. And uh, <laughs> That's what I just told you. I was rethinking what and happened. And do your shit swell up quick? Uh, a couple times it did. Depends. 
You know, I probably didn't see things coming. I wasn't at, my defense wasn't prepared. I didn't alert my defense. So when you when you when you fighting and you don't alert your defense, anything can happen. You know what I mean? Because you might just be having a conversation. I'm talking to somebody, yo man, why you do that? I'm like, oh, oh, because I'm thinking I'm a D a D danger to danger and bring it down by through the conversation. So I'm not alerting my defense and you know, getting my stance. Mistake number one. I'm always, you know what I mean, getting my what's mistake number one? Not being ready. Not being ready. I was, you know, I ain't think I thought we was having ready. A couple times, a couple times I got socked. It was based off a conversation. Right. So my defense wasn't prepared or alert. So you was talking too much. No, I'm trying to, you know, this de escalate -escalate. the whole situation. Like, hold up, man, we ain't got to do this, please. And and put my hands up. You know what I mean? Like Uh that's that's a sign of white flag. Uh Oh, we ain't got to do this. Mistake number two. Uh There are no white flags. Right. I mean, that's a, that's how I have. Well, he keep a white flag in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> got a handkerchief in there, don't you? Yo, I be telling a lot of fighters, man. I be like, man, y'all got the wrong coaches, man. You know what I mean? Because some of these fighters, they coaches need to throw them throw them towels up in them joints. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, straight up. You know what I mean? Because my, if, I'm gonna go through with my coach if it get heated up in there a little too much. We ain't gotta go to you beat me down too much. If it's a little too much body fended work, and I'm like this <laughs> lot. Who was your coach? Man, I had, I had a couple coaches. You know. Uh, I used to be a Joe Frazier gym around. Not, one not of his far. coaches was in jail. Let me tell you, one of his coaches was in jail. He ain't no old head. He old got a head, little fishy. Old head, fake teaching him how to box. Mm. Really going to box him and all out his and jumper in, into his bed. That's what he was trying to do. And then an old one, an old head from our way, found out he was down there training him, and went down there and told old head to leave him the fuck alone. He didn't even know he was about to get. Mm. No, what happened was you ain't know. That's I come what in, happened. I come in a joint. They called me, and, and told I realized him. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> me being a martial artist, you know what I mean. Something, it's something real important. Hold this nanny. Hey nanny, I'm gonna call you right back. I'm recording, okay? okay. All right. So me being me being a uh, a martial artist, I didn't know that the uh, the defense mechanism of choice in jail was boxing. You know, so. I was a couple old heads I seen running around the yard, they shadow boxing. They got their gloves in their back pocket. So I'm like, damn, I got to do that. You know? Because, you know, martial arts, I couldn't be running around kicking. They thought that shit, somebody had stabbed you, they thought you knew how to do some shit that was other than the norm. So when I'm seeing, I said, damn, I got to start doing it. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be straight up. One day I came out of the yard, had my gloves in my back pocket hanging out, and I started doing the boxer run. You know the joint they do, like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, who would train on the block? I come back on the block. I see the old head, had the gloves in his back pocket. Uh-huh. He used to be in the back, shadow box. <laughs> he, I'm talking about look good. This dude look like Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. He look like all them boys in his yeah. prime. He's going to knock you out and pluck you. No, so he's fine. So I said, damn, you know. I said, uh, you a trainer? Said, yeah, young buck, what's up? I'm trying to do a little training, get my thing. And I never told him that I wasn't no boxer. I was a martial artist, but I was trying to get in the boxing game. He said, come on, I got you. I could train you. I'm like, damn, this much I got a trainer. That was easy. I got a tra-. I'm like, this was easy. I got a trainer. I'm like, bet. So now, you know, walking in the yard with him a couple of times, you tell him, show me the move. See what you do right here. You know what I mean? See all this right here, you got to keep this protected. I didn't even pay attention that he used to do this a lot. <laughs> now, see, I didn't know what the f- was going on. He was I rubbing on you, wasn't he? So he used to be like, man, see this? You got to keep this right here. All that. <laughs> all this right here. Keep that protected at all times because if I come, this, I'm like, he used to always do that. So I did, I'm thinking like, damn, this dude really knows something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, this dude is, you know what I mean? Cause all the other always, hey, what's up, man? Uh-huh. Say, I mean, say, speak to him and all that, uh-huh. this and that third. So I'm like, all right, cool. This episode of Me and Oz River Game is brought to you by Molson Coors. We celebrate life's biggest moments with champagne. But the everyday achievements deserve to be celebrated too. Whether it's closing out your to-do list, getting somewhere on time, or just waking up. See, just waking up and living is the celebration. So the next time you accomplish something within your everyday, celebrate it with Miller High Life. The champagne of beers. Because that's what living the high life is all about. Miller High Life is the champagne of beers, a quality beer that's smooth and great tasting. It's an iconic champagne-like glass bottle with refreshing champagne like tiny bubbles. It's celebration that's within everyone's reach. Welcome to the high life. 
Go to MillerLite.com slash millions to find Miller Lite near you. Welcome to the highlight. Celebrate responsibly 2023. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right. Bottom line, he grabbed Wallow Dick. See, protect this right here. <laughs> no, he you always like, oh, wait, bro. Whoa. Fuck, dude, what are you doing? He's like, show me that one more time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, them dudes, man. He one was, more time. He, show me one more time. He was a he was he was a hiney warrior. Come to find out. He man, he ain't seen no ass. He never he, he never seen some ass he didn't like. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm like, damn. You found out the hard way, didn't you? No, 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 no. And it had to go that far. <laughs> one of my old ways peeped the scene and said, listen, we're not gonna let this happen, right? Found I out did, the hard way. I really didn't know. Like, see. See, see, this is the thing. I was on a journey in jail. Dude, I didn't. How you do? But how you do? He never see that. See, like because they told me. <laughs> he told you, didn't he? Man, he was. He got. Listen, he was different. He got married in the yard one year. He was different. Oh man, he's, this wasn't no regular old head. So, so he's a bad dude. Man, he was vicious. He was, he was a. He was a he was booty vicious. warrior. So he's a booty bandit, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was that. So I didn't know. So I'm like, damn. I'm thinking I got the best training job. I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. get on the phone. I can get on the phone. Yeah, man, I'm up here boxing, man. I'm chilling, man. You know what I mean? Doing my bit. You know what I mean? I join, you know, man. Come home. Do my thinking I'm gonna be, you know, I got a chance. I'm still young, so I'm like, come home. You know what I mean? I can't go to the Olympics, but I get in the amateurs, knock a couple people out. Get in the game. You know Take what I mean? Take ass Bernard, huh? Yeah, because you know Bernard is everybody's story. See, yeah. once one dude do something, they everybody, like, yeah, man, because Bernard, Bernard was locked up in the same jail. Yeah, Bernard did it. Yeah, that's Why how can't they, you? That, yeah. that's the old joint. Bernard didn't that joint, man. I'm like, damn, I could be the champion of the world. <laughs> this dude was trying to make me the champion of a cell. You know what I mean? Champion of a mattress. <laughs> I said, he was vicious. I'm telling you. Yo, man, this boy, this boy stats. Stats, <laughs> stats make, were crazy. He huh? was trying to make me champion of a jail mattress. I didn't know what was going on. See, 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 listen, I'm going to tell you some shit, Caleb. See. Yo. I'm going to be the first one to admit. Yo. These dudes be lying when they go to jail. Dudes well, be scared. He, he was trying to make you a five-time mattress <laughs> champion. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how they, you know, you know, you, you know how they got mattress max the old. He was trying to make me Wally, Wally mattress. Wally mattress. I'm telling you, this dude was different because I'm telling you, I didn't, once I found out his stats, I was like, man, I ain't never seen nothing old head Wait, again. what was his stats? His stats was like he was undefeated in mattress <laughs> warrior. He was a he was man. This boy was vicious. I said, "What?" <laughs> like he wasn't. A, he was a professional. Oh, what was his name? I ain't gonna put his name out there like that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. What was his name? I don't know. I don't know where he at, man. He might be on the streets now. Huh? His name was Dangerous Dan, man. Dangerous Dan. He was vicious. Vicious, huh? Yeah, but no. I'm just saying. You know what? I'm gonna be straight up. You know what's crazy? Everybody be front like they don't be scared in jail, man. It's, that's a scary place. All that tough dudes be like, because I ain't gonna front me. Me being young, going in, that was one of the things I was worried about. I said, man, I gotta, I gotta go out here, man, with my bottom intact. You know what I mean? <laughs> I gotta make sure I go out how I came, how, how I came in. Because no, man, it get crazy. You don't be knowing. See, jail ain't like it is now. You know what I'm saying? The way jail is now is like these dudes being there chilling. They got the phones. They got that. Shit. When I went to prison. It wasn't a bunch of young dudes there. Right. Now it is. But now prison filled with a bunch of young dudes. So hey, by kumbaya and all that. Shit. When I went there, it was like a little bit of young dudes and a bunch of old dudes in there. <laughs> it was no straight up. They were showing you the ropes. What? No, 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 nope. I didn't let nobody show me the ropes. I seen the ropes. You the ropes. And I realized, you know, Just showing you how things go. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so what happened is there's no bullshit, man. <laughs> I didn't know. You know what I mean? I didn't know what was going on. So. I walked in the shower room for the first time. And that shit was. I'm like, man, they in there talking about the game. I'm like, hey, like, yeah, man, you see the fucking game? I'm like, because me, when I came to the to the old penitentiary, it was like a bunch of young dudes came because they it was a it was a jail. Dallas was a jail. Where's though? It wasn't a, they wasn't accepting prisoners for a long time. So when you get classified at Camp Hill, when you go there. It wasn't a lot to do, so so when I went, it was like a, a little bit of young boys, and it's like it was like a scene in the movie. As soon as we walked in there, you walking in there with your boxes, you know, you had some shorts that you, you know, what I mean, the whole joint looked at us like the music stopped. Y'all got y'all shorts on for? That's basically what they was. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. everybody was in there having a gun show, and they was having conversation, talking about the game. You see them red skins? You see my red skins, mother? You damn right, motherfucker. Yeah, kick y'all. I'm like, hold up, they talking? 
Slapping five, did you do shadow boxing in the joint? Slapping five. This shit was crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I got to make it out alive. <laughs> that night I went back to the cell and I said, man, I said, you know what, man? I got to cry because I don't know what the fuck I got myself into. I didn't know what the fuck. That day I realized I signed up for the wrong That's yeah, true. Reality set in. I said, oh, shit, I, I'm going to make it, man. Because anytime they look, I'm talking about, you got, listen, you got 75 dudes in the shower room. It's clouded. It's already steamed up in the joint. So you got to be from here. You got to post up on the wall. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> got my back on the wall. I'm like this. Uh, yeah, this shower is overrated. I don't need no shower for this bit I'm doing. I, I can play the sink. Shower when you're out. Yeah, it's overrated. You know what I mean? You realize shower, being in the shower, that stuff is overrated. Like, damn, why did I even want to go to the shower? You probably like three showers a day, didn't you? Uh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I was a sink warrior for a minute. Be in the cell, wash it up in the sink. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. like, yo, man, I seen some wild shit in that shower, man. <laughs> Oh, my God. Dude, man. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm just thankful I made it out of that joint, man. That's a scary place, man. <laughs> we're thankful you made it out, too, man. We're, we're glad to have you here with us. Thank you, man. I, yo, yo, man. I just be thinking about it sometimes. Waking up, I be like, oh, yeah, listen. Let me show you something. You have dreams about it, huh? No, Dude, not really. This is the funniest shit, man. <sighs> Nightmares. <sighs> this is the funniest shit ever, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the funniest shit. This man just in the middle of our interview just start talking about <laughs> jail <laughs> and motherfuckers flashing no, their pieces no, in the no. shower. And no, he go to block. He go to block. Was. He go to block right here. Look, I just Google the block. That's the block. That's you right there. No, that's not me. That's when he started. Got a dog. Yeah, that's the new. Do you joke. know they had a puppy, a, a prison puppy program. That's the block right there. Where they got dogs in jail. I don't know where. Yeah, they here. had. A, here? Yeah, see, like, he told me about that shit, and I was laughing, and then when I posted it, everybody was like, Gilly, that's for real. Like, people really got puppies in jail. I'm like, wait, so y'all do that to the dog? Wallow was a puppy. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a real live <laughs> puppy. <laughs> they said, oh, here, that box had him on a leash. Yep. S this and spanking shit. him and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what you looking up, man? Trying to see if they still got my ad up here. I had a, uh, they ain't got it no you more. Had a, you had a prison ad? You was running ads in prison? Two for one ad. Like, that's why I'm glad I never did no motherfucking time. You never been to jail, huh? No. That's perfect, man. Because uh, he did enough time for every motherfucking body. 25 total years. No, but you know what? They had some great boxes in the joint. Some of the best boxes was in there, man. But them, they never come home. And only Bernard came home and was something. <laughs> Who you, let me ask you a question though. Who your top five fighters right now? In the game? Mm hmm. Based off of skill. Based off of skill. Not so like, based off of keep, accolades. Why do you keep saying skill? That, because it, not listen, off of no, accolades. No. Cause, cause if you, you got a belt, accolade, if you got a belt, you, 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 you what do you but, mean? But that, but, but okay. What before, is skills? Before Terrence Crawford had a belt, we knew he was good. You could just tell. You could look. You before Earl Spence had a belt, we knew he was good. Well, I think, before um, Caleb Plant had a belt, you knew he was good. So before Boots get a belt, you know he's great. You know he's good. Mm -hmm. You know certain motherfuckers is good. You know they. I train Boots here. Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, I think Terrence Crawford's got to be on the list. Yeah, absolutely. Five of them. Mm, Canelo's got to be on the list. Mm-hmm. Shakur's got to be on the list. Mm -hmm. I think Usyk has to probably be on the list. Mm, that's a good one. Five is hard. That's a good one. I got. I got to really answer the question. Answer I can't question. be on the list. Yeah, I can be. On you the can list. do whatever you want. Oh yeah, I don't feel like testing. I got to be on the list. And I, I'm I, I know my skills are crazy. So, it, and I'm but just going to add skills. one more. I'm just going to add one more. Tank got to be on the list. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, list, yeah, yeah. Tank's all. Tank's right. the biggest draw. But this is what I'm trying to say. the biggest draws in boxing. What, when you say skill, I don't understand. What are you trying to say? Break that down. Like, because if dude, you, y'all ain't mentioned some dudes that got belts and stuff. So what are you talking no, about? No, that's his top But five. you it's said not, skill. What, what Define skill. Okay. Skill, like boxing IQ, boxing ability. Right. Knowing, knowing what to do, when to do it, why to do right. it, how Every, to do it. Oh, so if right. you got belts, you don't know how to, if you got belts, you know that, right? Well, yeah. so, I mean, some, some people, guys... You know, use their <coughs> physical advantages more than their mental. You know, right. Advantages. Oh, the aggressive. So, so you know, okay. aggressive, break so, it down. So, is a, is a motherfucker, is my 
though that get a flash in a pan belt, bro. Now I ain't talking about them. 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 them uh, I'm uh, talking uh, about the you gold. You got flash in a pan champion sometimes. Whereas though he wasn't supposed to win and he caught a knockout. Oh, he got one in. Oh, it changed like, like, the whole like, fight. Like, okay, like the heavyweight. He had a motherfucking fight. He had a motherfucking belt for all the four months. Like the like the, the, the then the, he's done. The yeah. Mexican heavyweight boy that had the belts. He knocked somebody out. Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz. He was right. that guy for a minute. Yeah, yeah, all until he's still that. a great fighter. He's still no, he's he's trying, a great trying to fighter, uh, but make something, I think, with Deontay right now. He knocked the boy like, out and got the belt. But see, with, he uh, he actually he might have see Andy Ruiz actually is a bet is more as far as skill wise. Mm -hmm. He's more skillful than Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua straight up and down. Huh? One, two. He and. Andy could actually see something, slip it, counter punch it, come back. Uh, yeah. But the physical shit, he this he this tall compared to them. They this tall, so they 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 jab probably seven inches longer. So a motherfucker could just jab you from across the street. So you got to get in on that shit. Then you fighting heavyweights. All it so takes is one shot. At any time it could be like ah, and turn your whole. And electricity off. You didn't pay your bill. G -g -g, your lights is the fuck out. So you got to be careful on that type of time because if you get you see motherfuckers at at wealth weight. You see motherfuckers at light lightweight. They get punched in the face all day. They just walk through that shit. That <laughs> you're not doing that shit at heavyweight. It's a 240 pound man punching you in your grill man mm -hmm. so you got to be strategic with it so a lot of times it he's definitely the more skillful fighter but his physical attributes is so much more that he might could get over in a fight yeah yeah let me say something i never gave my top five fighters because i know people know i'm well you know i'm just getting a little versed in fighting but i was fighting 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 for a long time you know even as a kid i'm gonna get y'all my top fight number one sugar ray robinson he was a legend. Right. Had a, he had thousands of fights. These dudes don't even fight that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? So by that, he's a warrior. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, Mike Tyson. You know, the big guys. Uh, probably. That's the only guys you know, huh? Uh, who else? <sighs> Marvin Hagler. And... Uh, Old school fighters. Georgie Benton. Now I'm going to give you all my 10. Floyd, five. You know how I liked it? This guy, man, I seen two of his fights. They was they was, they was was like the fights of the year. This dude was great. His name was Artorio Gotti. He he was a warrior in the ring. Him and, him and Ivan Robinson had some battles. I just liked this dude because he just kept bleeding and kept fighting. <laughs> he was a bleeder. But he just kept fighting. They had the fights down in AC. This is back when AC was the baby Vegas. You know what I mean? So him, let me see. Uh, Pee Wee was a legend. Pee Wee. Who? Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker. Oh, okay. uh, Sweet P. It's a P -wee. Pee Wee. <laughs> that was his name, right? Sweet P. Pernell oh, Sweet P. Whitaker. Because he, he, he said the way he used to do his joints. Uh, <laughs> Yo, he was him. He said who? <laughs> what's my man name? R.I.P. to Sweet P. My, what's my man name? He used to come out. I just liked his. I'm giving him his. You get on the list just because his intros. He used to come I out on. Him, a, huh, yep, on a flying car, carpet. Oh. He was a legend. He was a legend. I like yeah. his. I like his whole intro. He was. He was a bad. He was a BMF. You a box of the story too, because you know who the he, he know, talk about. He used to come. In, he used to watch anything. He know. Yeah. Uh, he didn't know Ivan Robinson in them. Uh, I would. You know. I'm. I'm gonna do like a. a a three-way joint on the Philly tip. No, a four-way. This my, you know, I'm going to put that number. They could all be together on the same list. And I'll probably, uh, David Reed, uh, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Danny. Uh, man, this list long as shit, man. What's the one boy? Yo, yo, I seen him. He had the old Rolls Royce. He was driving around with the belt in the back. Uh, uh, Belgian Taylor? No, Joe he was... No, no, he was like a heavyweight. He was like one of the big weights. He had the oh, he had this old ancient Rolls Joe Royce. Frazier. No, uh, uh, Weatherspoon. I don't know what you talking about, man. It was a, it was a box name. 
fuck is he talking? Who is he talking about, man? Witherspoon, you know what I'm talking about, right? He was a champ. He was a boxing champion. Oh, I don't know who you talking about. You know what you talking about? Somebody from his top bunk or something like that. Yeah, yeah. somebody from his top bunk. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. But so, but man, fuck all that. So so Caleb, man. The family Tim, life. Tim Witherspoon. Tim Witherspoon. Okay. He was a le- listen, oh, okay. two-time heavyweight champion. Y'all don't even know uh, boxing. Well, These I boys know don't Tim even know boxing. You know what I mean? I think Jersey. he's on the wall at uh, Shuler's gym. Yeah, one yeah. of my other fighters, Bert yeah. Cooper. But go ahead. What the f- <laughs> he was, you know, he was a warrior. He didn't care. <laughs> so the family life, man. Yeah. How does it feel to have your soul mate, brother? It feels good. It feels good. You know, I feel super blessed to have a wife, you know, like, like Jordan. Um... Anybody who knows me, you know, I'm sure they know who Jordan is, but uh, it's just, you know, it's nice to have a teammate, you know, somebody mm-hmm. who's not like a, who's an asset, you know, not a liability. Um, and she was, you know, a division one 100 meter hurdler. Mm. You know, she had a full ride to UNLV to run the 100 meter hurdle. So she's an athlete, you know, she knows the type of dedication and sacrifice it takes. And um, she, she makes it easy on me, you know, she really makes it to where I just have to, you know, focus on my boxing, you know, whether it be with our rental properties and our, our stocks, all our investments, you know, you know, she cooks and, you know, all the things that she helps out around the house. And, um, you know, with our daughter, Charlie, you know, it just makes it to where I, I really can zone in on boxing and do what I need to do. And, you know, that's why I don't take that lightly. You know, that's why I'm putting everything into it. And, you know, I don't really have distractions like that in my life because, you know, my family's counting on me and for her to be doing as much as she does, you know, that lets me know that she really believes in what we got going and what I'm doing. And, you know, like I said, I don't take that lightly. So, you know, it's nice to have a good, a good friend like Jordan and, um, in my life, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have that for sure. Not everyone has that. And, um, but she's cool to be around, you know, a lot of girls want to be liked, but they're not likable. Right, you mm. know what I mean, and it's like she's easy to be around. She's mm. easy to hang around. I like that, yeah, she's, that's real. You know, Let's bring that back. A lot of girls want to be like, but she didn't like, like but she ain't likable. But that's people in general, really. But you know, she knows how to just chill and kick it too. So, but she's a really hard worker. She's like the hardest worker I've ever met in my life. So, you know, I'm super blessed to have somebody like that on my team who, and in my life, you know, help keep me focused and keeps me motivated because all the shit she's doing and accomplishing, it's like damn. I got, I got to keep up with that, you know? How do you block out? You know, we live in a world now where everything... Is, it was different for a fighter back in the day than now because we live in the world now where it's though everything is televised, everything is coming your way, everybody got an opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, people that never boxed, you know, never want to fight in boxing in their life like him, he, they think they're commentators. Oh, yeah. You got all this stuff coming at you. How do you block out the noise? You know, why you why you trying to train or why you trying to get, you know, yeah. get it together? Because when you're training and it's a big fight coming up, everybody is coming from all angles. How do you stay locked in? Well, I think, you know, I've been through quite a few things in my life and that's allowed me to see who I really am and the type of, you know, how I can operate under pressure. And when I when you come out the other side of those things, it's like I, I know who I really am. So nobody's opinion of me. Is more opinion, more important than the opinion I have of myself, you know. And their opinion is just them on Instagram. They don't even know me, but me knowing the things I've been through and come out the other side and coming out even better. I mean, that lets me know like I know who I really am. And so it's just about you know not letting anyone's opinion be more important than the opinion you have yourself. And um, I trust myself because I know that I'm going to come through. I'm not out drinking, partying, like I said, I, I know the type of work I'm putting in, the type of discipline I have, and the things I sacrifice. And, um, you know, I know when it all comes to comes to blows with whoever's standing across from me, you know, I highly doubt, you know, there's very few people in the whole world in any weight class who have put more into this than, than I have. So. How many how many years you got left in the game, do you think? Um, I'm 31, probably. I don't know. Anywhere from like 33 to 35, but mm. I've done, you know, really well with my money. Yes. You know, I don't blow it. You know, I'm, I'm well invested. I have properties, uh, rental properties. I'm well invested in the stock market. And um, so, you know, I'm in a situation where I, I could retire today. I have enough now to retire and live the same way I'm living now until I pass. You know, so I, I'm proud of that, you know, doing well with my money. I have a good team around me, my financial advisor. Arrington, RCPA, uh, Mike, 
And so I think it's important for fighters to, you know, have a team around them of people they can trust so they can, you know, invest wisely. And that way when they're fighting, it's not just to keep the lights on, but it's because, you know, you love it. I don't feel under, the, you know, I don't feel like I'm under the gun to have to take a fight be so I can get my bills paid or so I can, you know, do this or do that. I'm, I'm living comfortably in. You know, like I said, I don't have to fight another day in my life. Honestly, I'm just doing it because well, it's what I love. Hold on. It wasn't when I was fighting. It wasn't about money, but uh, you know, I was I was always trying to keep my lights on because I never I wasn't trying to get knocked out. You know yeah. what I mean? So you got to be in there fighting to keep the lights on. I mean, but I have the money to keep the lights on. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking about going to sleep. I wasn't. Trying, <laughs> I'm in the ring. I ain't trying to get my lights. I'm not fighting. Yeah, I'm fighting to keep the lights on. Because if, if, if the right, the wrong, you know, the the wrong, the wrong, He's a stupid the wrong punch come, I'm going to sleep. I'm out. You know what I mean? Went to sleep plenty of time. Shut up. Yeah, you know I mean, I can't be. I mean, I had hey. you know my record seven to thirty one, but it's a record to be talked about. Yeah, you know it's what I mean? one to be talked about exactly. I ain't 31. give up. That's why I'm saying when you giving Vila props, you ain't giving me props. I kept going. Amateur record. Uh, they you up. Shut up, man. Oh, you know what it is. Tapped out a lot of. That's good though. It's good to know that you really. Stacking your paper because you never hear that side from, you know, because some people, you know, it's if, you know, you got to do your thing out here, you know, you yeah, and everybody yeah, yeah. spend their money the way they want to. And cool. You know, I have, you know, nice things. Anybody knows yeah. the old school. Oh, yes, that I yes got. you do. I got, old school. You know, Chevelle and Paula, I got yes. a nice house and stuff like that. But, you know, as far as like spending it faster than I make it, you know, nobody's above that rule. You know, and we've had a million examples before us of people who made millions and millions yeah. and millions and then. I don't want to retire and be back at square one and have to fight just as hard to get back to yeah, where I was. Yeah, so it's right. like, I'm going to do it right the first time. You know, I'm going to learn from other people's mistakes. Absolutely. Mm. Well, shit, man, we appreciate you appreciate pulling, you up, pulling up, up on us, man. Yeah, you no know doubt. what I mean? We wish we had a fight date right now to get you off of him and Jamal. Me too. Jamal? <laughs> we waiting on you, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, you know, shout out to Jamal Charlo because, you know, I, I with him, he doing his thing, and it's just a great fight that I would want to see. I would want to see mm -hmm. Caleb Plant versus Jamal Charlo. So you know, if, if I you, think that's a fight, you know, the boxing world would love to see too. You know, it'd be great for boxing. It'd be a big fight, and you know, that's what boxing is about. You know, the best fight and the best. And I think it's champion. a really good money fight. I think both of y'all would be able to really make some really good money. So, and that's what's when when y'all at y'all age in it, y'all already champions. Y'all already. Is is it's about belts, but it's about money, really, man. It's about being able to to get the bag, and I think that's a really good mm -hmm. fight, pay per view fight too. So, Jamal, if you're listening, Caleb wants to fight you. Yes, sir. Let's get it um, done. And it's just like that, right?